Welcome to the Honest Art Podcast. I'm your host, Jody King. As an artist for 20 years, instructor, speaker, author, and fellow rebel, I've worked with thousands of people around the world, from beginners to established artists, helping them create their strongest art and build a career doing what they love. So if you are ready to have a little fun while you learn about art, creativity, building a thriving art business, and living a bold, audacious life, you are in the right place. Also, if you're considering going pro in your art business, grab the PDF in the show notes on the five things they don't teach you in art school. All right, let's get messy. Hello, and welcome back to the Honest Art Podcast. Today, I have got a super special guest that every freaking artist out there will be able to relate, relate to. And my guest is artist Kristen Horner. And Kristen and I first came to know each other through my program, my mentoring program called Studio Elite. And um, I really wanted to have her on the podcast because it was only a very short time ago. Kristen, can you believe this? Only eight months ago. It was only eight months ago oh. when Kristen, I know, when Kristen was still pretty much in the art closet. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you didn't even really call yourself an artist at that time. So I know that you were super nervous to even apply to Studio Elite, but I'm so, so glad that you did um, uh, because you'll hear that she is way out of the closet now and has even painted in this last year or in the last eight months painted a mural on the side of a building here in Texas at a town here in Texas. So how's that for coming out of the art <laughs> closet? Like really just putting yourself right out there. But before uh, we get to talking to Kristen, I want to let you know that the next cohort of Studio Elite will be starting this January. Um, but we just now opened applications. I only take six to eight artist and once it's full with all the applications coming in it's full and the next round won't open until July of 2024 so uh, this is a great way to kick off your year to get started to like especially you know if it's go time you feel like it's go time for you click the link in the show notes if you feel like you're ready to join Studio Elite but just um, so you know, no one ever feels like they are ready <laughs> to join Studio Elite. <laughs> no one ever feels fully ready, uh, but they show up scared just in order to live a life of their dreams as an artist. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Kristen Horner. Let me tell you a little bit about this brilliant woman. Okay, Kristen is a fifth generation Texan and comes from a long line of farmers and ranchers. Her roots run deep in agriculture and heritage. However, instead of working cattle or farming, her time is now spent raising three children while slinging paint. And Kristen paints mostly representational, uh, but just like Texas cattle, she doesn't like being fenced in, which is what I love. That is so good. That is so you, Kristen. Um, with that, she dabbles in almost every genre and medium, and each piece she creates is honest and houses a piece of her soul somewhere in the midst. Oh my gosh, you guys are going to have to go see Kristen's work uh, after you um, listen to this. Each painting that she creates speaks life and love to every person who sees it. So my goal is um, is to share Kristen with you so that you can see her work and as the viewer will be changed, um, sparked to want more in your life, to dream and to reminisce. So Kristen, let's get into it. Let's, let's okay. let people know who you are. Uh, Kristen, can you tell us how or why you came to finally claim artist, the term artist as your profession. And I know it's still new for you. It's very fresh. So it might, might feel weird to even continue to, you just have to say it a lot, but 
was there, was there something that you're like, no, I am a freaking artist. Yeah. So I, it's still hard to even say that, like, I'm an artist. When somebody asks me what I do, well, I'm an artist. I still feel like I'm not quite deserving of that title, but it's been a long journey of self-exploration and trying to figuring out who I am, that I am worthy of that title. I can do this. I am doing this. Um, a lot of reflection, a lot of figuring out what was holding me back to even claim that title. Um, and it's thoughts that were my own, not necessarily that somebody put in my mind. Like I didn't feel good enough. I've not had any formal training. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Literally no clue. I'm learning with each piece that I do. Um, and so I, I just, just I have to, like, I'm, I'm sorry. I have to stop you because this is blowing my mind because when you, when I saw your work and I continue to see your work, the, you're such an incredible, first of all, you're an incredible human. And I'm lucky enough to know you personally, but, um, but your art is next level. It is next <laughs> level. You. I couldn't do the art that you do on a, on a, on my best day. Stop. But, so it's remarkable to me to hear you say it's still, you know, a little difficult to, you know, for you to, to call yourself an artist because your art is just yeah. so amazing. Thank you. I think it, you know, it, it's not a title or, or a term that you can, I feel like you can just use loosely. Like it's a big damn deal to me, like an artist. And when I think about an artist, like who actually is an artist, I think of you, I think of Jeff Weir, Mark Majori. I'm going to mispronounce his last name, but like people that I look up to and have followed, I'm like, they're it. They're making it like they're an actual artist. They know what the fuck they're doing. Excuse my language, but I don't. Um, and so claiming that title is, like I said, it's still hard, but I am getting there to where I feel confident, a little more confident enough to say, yeah, I, I am like, I, yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Well, yeah. Um, and that's, I think you you speak to so many of us who like somebody can see us a certain way, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and yet it doesn't resonate with us. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. um, kind of, it's like it all, it's all comes from the inside. It all comes from our own self-worth. Absolutely. I'm seeing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, okay. So, you know, my next question was, uh, what's been your biggest challenge as an artist, but that this might be it. I don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth. <laughs> But what, what has been your biggest challenge? Uh, me, 100% me. Like, I've been my biggest roadblock, just like in like my own thoughts. Like, again, not, not feeling like I have a seat at the table or even deserve a seat because I haven't had the experience or the training or whatever else. And realizing that that's okay is finally starting to resonate with me a little bit more. But I think I am my biggest challenge worrying about what people think or if I'm enough or trying to be enough for somebody. Um, and that, that's the biggest challenge in realizing I don't have to be, it's not about them. It's about me and what I'm pouring out into the world through my paintings. Like that's, that's where it is. Not Absolutely. here. <laughs> so right. Yeah, I've right. definitely been the biggest roadblock. Yeah. Well, uh, so many people can relate to that. Right. I mean, we, you know, when we first, or, well, not first, but you know, the entire time we're in the studio elite, we are, we are working on ourselves. There's no, we can't have, you know, a successful business while having, you know, a really, really poor self image that they all yeah. go hand in hand. Totally agree with that 100%. And I think that's one of the things with studio elite, uh, has helped change my whole mindset with that. And I, I'm holding, I was holding myself back from where I am going and where I am going is huge. I, it in my is. mind, my goal is like, it's huge. So that, that changes everything. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So can you tell people what kind of art you create and if it has had an impact on you or other areas of your life, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So let me, let me back up and start out with saying this. 
from the time I was, well, when I first picked up a paintbrush, when I was a junior in high school, I was, I was like, I freaking love abstract art. Like this is my jam. Nobody can tell me what I created is not what I said it is because what it's, you know, like, what is it? It's, it's not anything concrete. Um, let's just say that I, <laughs> that's not for me. I'm not an abstract artist. We've established that <laughs> in Studio Late, but m- most of the time, what I've found since I've started and stepped out is it's been representational art. It's, I've been approached with commissions. That's all I've done thus far is here's a photograph that means something to me. Can you recreate this? So um, it's all been representational. Uh, and it's this all been is so numerous. fascinating. This is so fascinating because so many artists go, yeah, I just want to paint abstract. It's so yeah. easy. Yeah. Number one. Yeah, that's yeah, what that's I thought. A- yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No. That was bullshit. Uh, and yeah. Number- it's complete. <laughs> and number two, because nobody can judge me. I'm like, are you kidding me? They're going to judge you regardless. Oh, you're, you're not wrong. But I was a naive 17 year old. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm still a little bit naive, but yeah, I, I was way wrong uh, in what I was meant to do as far as like the style. So yeah, we're representational at the moment. But again, I do like to do just about everything. I get a little bored sometimes, but I think representational art is probably my jam. Yeah. And, so. and when you're talking about representational, are there things that you really like to paint? So I, this kind of ties back to my heritage. I grew up in agriculture. Um, my dad was, he has since passed, he's passed away three years ago, but um, he was the best cattleman I've ever known, will ever know. And he kind of put a love, him and my mom both, for cattle and horses. And I find myself being really excited about painting something Western. And it, I think it just ties back to my roots and it sparks memories. Um, and that's, that's kind of where I, right now, yeah, that's, that's what I'm drawn to the most. Well, so. that's what, when I see your art, it, it's so clear that your passion for that comes through in the in those paintings that you do and I know that you have you know people commissioning those works for for you and they they mean something for the collector as well and so the way you capture those moments uh whether you know with cattle or you know people on the on the horses I mean I'm not explaining it well I apologize but just the way you've captured those images is um it's just remarkable i cannot believe you haven't had any formal training but it what it really shows is that all great artists view the world in a unique way right yeah. like we can see like someone who's not an artist might look outside and say there's a tree Um, artists look outside and we notice how this leaf turns to the right and the other leaf tips upward and that leaf tips downward and that, all right. And that's what you do with your art. You know, I've seen you paint your your paintings of the giant golf car, uh, golf course. (laughs) It's like a holy shit, like that with the cliffs, the way, the detail work that you do, the way you see the world, the way you see these images and the way you capture them is incredible. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Very much. (laughs) Look at you. (laughs) You're not even saying no, no, no. You're just saying, thank you. That's amazing. (laughs) Listen, trying to accept compliments is, is also a challenge. It's something that you have to, I'm working on it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Accepting the compliments. Yeah. Yes. If you're thinking you may want to go farther faster, I really encourage you to find a community of artists to support you in your personal growth as well as your business growth. Mentoring artists on their journey sets my face on fire. It's my passion. It's my purpose. It's my calling. I absolutely love it. But even if we don't work together, please find someone who believes in your fine self 
If you think, though, that it would be a blast for us to work together, applications are now open for Studio Elite, which starts in February. And what a great time because it's a great time for you to put your stake in the ground for 2024 and to set your artistic goals in motion. You can get more info at the link in the show notes. Okay, well, I have loved just in the eight months, I've loved seeing your business success. Um, I've loved seeing you increase your prices. I've loved just seeing you come into your own as an artist. But can you share, uh, you know, how or if, hopefully it's a how, um, you grew personally as a result of being in Studio Elite? Oh, man, this I could probably ramble on about this and not ramble, but I could talk about this for a really long time. I, for the first time in, I would probably say my entire life of almost 40 years invested in myself, why I did it in the moment. I don't know because it was not even, I didn't even think about it. I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. I don't know what the frick I'm doing, but I'm going to apply. I'm not going to get in, but I'm going to apply. And then I'm in still like not sure how the crap that happened thankful but why me you know um but I I have this had this huge fear of failing and I don't do well with failure I don't know many people that do but fear will stop me in my tracks and failing and I just that's it I'm done I'm out so before our first call our first zoom call to meet everybody I was like I can't I don't even want to show up I don't, I can't do this. I can't, I don't, why am I here? Uh, But I will tell you, I'm so glad that I didn't give up on myself. I think that's the first time in a long time that I didn't, I didn't give up on myself. I showed up. Um, I deserved a seat at the table. Um, Studio Elite, (laughs) I'm really trying not to get emotional. It changed my whole thought process of, who I am, why I do what I do and the purpose behind why I do what I do. It's not just for me, although it's very therapeutic and there's a lot of reason behind why I do what I do, but, um, I now have the tools in my toolbox and I know I probably say this term a lot, but I have the tools to be successful in my art business, like every single tool that I can think of at how to do PR, how to do marketing, how to, X, Y, and like you name it. I have the tools. Best of all, I have a support system. I, the group that I was with, like we're all in different walks for our art careers. Some are very seasoned, some are at the very beginning, but supporting one another and knowing like, Hey, we're doing it. We're doing it together. We're walking through this. That was huge for me, the camaraderie and the support, but I have the tools in my toolbox. If I fail now, it is on me. It is truly on me, but I'm not going to fail because I have the tools. I didn't give up on myself and I showed up. And um, that for me is huge. My eyes are open. My thoughts are changed. I'm doing this. I am an artist and I'm doing it. So that's, that's the cliff notes version, (laughs) but yeah, I will say, and this is cliche and it annoys the tar out of me when people say this, but it really did change my life, not just in art and my art business, but personally. And that that's huge for me. Very huge. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. You know, Kristen, one of the things that I, I say to people, because, you know, I, I'm so grateful for all of the success stories for people who have, have participated in studio elite. But one thing I say is just so everybody knows uh, the success of these artists is not about me. Like I, it, it's what the artists have done. So whether the artists do it, you know, get the tools and they do something with it or not, that's on them, but their, their success is theirs alone. And your success is yours alone. And I love that you said, whether you succeed or you fail, like it's, it, you know, it's not for the lack of you having, the tools to do it. And then one of the the things that I like to say to myself, and I think I may have told you this over the course of Studio Elite, but I I say to myself, my success is inevitable. 
Yeah. And the reason I believe my success is inevitable is because I fucking won't quit. Yes. Right? Yes. I've got the tools and I'm not going to quit. Yeah. It's huge. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Watch huge. out. Huge. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and your success is inevitable. I know it's already, you know, Thank you. it's already, uh, you know, you're on a roll. Um, okay. So I have a question. You mentioned in your bio that painting for you is healing, soul freeing, transformative, life giving, and full of lessons. It's a growing process with each piece that you gladly accept. Can you tell us what that means? Yeah. Um, I'm going to try not to go too long into this, but I feel like it's necessary to go back to the beginning for me. Um, so when I was 17, we moved from a really small town in West Texas to, so I went from a 1A school to a 5A school. Um, and the reason we moved is because we lost everything. My family filed for bankruptcy. We literally lost everything. Um, <laughs> very dark, very, very dark time. Um, but in that dark time, I go to this big school, they offer things obviously that a small school doesn't have. And one of those things was art. I didn't want to take it. I was like, this is so stupid. You know, I didn't want to do it, but my older sister did it as well. And she was like, Kristen, you're going to love it. It's going to be great. So I felt a little bit safer going into it. And thank you, Jesus. I had an incredible art teacher in high school. Um, it's Mary Kay Huff. And uh, I think she saw there was a lot of darkness and a lot of pain and hurt and allowed me to just be free. She took me to the classroom where nobody was. And she said, here's the paint, go for it. She was there too. I mean, every step of the way. But um, so in that dark time, art saved me. And I will say that till the end of time, it saved me in a very dark, dark time, not just for me, but for my family. Um, so that's kind of where that is. Um, I I relate to this, by the way. It, sa it saved dude. me. In a million dark times, and um, yeah, um, so I I get it. It's but also there there is an allowing in that you know you had to allow for that to happen, right? You did have to show up for yourself and allow that. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about that. I guess you could say it, but I think in those moments when I was like I could be free and I wasn't in my own head like thinking of all the bad things that were going on in my family life. Um, it set me free. I felt like the weight of the world was gone. And so even though I only painted in high school for those two years, didn't paint again for a very long time, it does the same thing for me now. Uh, it's my therapy <laughs> for myself, no matter what I'm working on. But I just feel, I feel free. I feel like um, I'm free to be me, who I am. I can get out what's up here or in here. And that's okay. It changes day to day. I can get that out. But um, I think too, with each piece that I do create, it's full of lessons. Like I it goes back to, I'm not professionally taught. I didn't go to college for this. You know, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, but each piece, each commission that I've done has been something different and it's grown different skills. And in the process of learning those skills in the midst of a painting, it's grown me and it's taught me a lot personally. Um, but each piece tells a story. And for me, like, that's a huge part of the painting at the end of the journey, when it's all said and done, you look at it and it tells me a story and it just it kind of captures me. And it just, you know, my soul just feels free. It feels good. So yeah. hopefully that kind of explains a little bit. It's hard to explain sometimes what's in here and here, but yeah, yeah. no, I think you've explained it beautifully. And, um, I also, I feel like, you know, I, I know your faith is very important to you yeah. and, uh, and so it reminds me of this um, this quote that I heard once that uh, that God doesn't call the qualified; He qualifies the called. And so you or she she qualifies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use that interchangeably. Anyway, um, but what's remarkable is that you uh, have just listened to the call. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Scared, shaken in your boots. Sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you, you're just trusting, you're trusting that. And it's, it's like, it's your purpose. 
And it yeah. would be such a shame. It would rob the world of yeah. your incredible gifts if you hadn't, um, you know, listened to that call. I'm better for knowing you. I'm better oh, for... Stop. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm better for uh, seeing your art, seeing the way you see the world through your art. Um, and I'm really, um, really excited that other people are now going to get to learn a little bit more about you and your art. Um, before you we much. wrap up, before we wrap up, um, we have a tradition here. And the tradition is asking the previous guests to leave a question for the next guest, not knowing um, who that guest is going to be. And so here's your question. Are we ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What are your thoughts um, on the development of AI technologies and their impact or the potential impact on artists in the art world? I'm, listen, I, I, I don't, I'm not on the bandwagon. I don't like it. Um, that's just me. But, you know, I think for me as an artist, it's, I'm a big feeler. I can see a piece of art and I feel it and I'm in that moment and I'm in that piece. Um, and there's so much that goes into that, even when I'm creating a piece, you know, and when you do too, I feel you're probably the same, like, there's just a story being told that you do, you know, when you're creating it, when it's AI, I mean, that's, where's your connection? Where's your story? There's nothing, nothing there. I, I mean, I, so I don't, I don't think twice about it. I don't relate to it. I can't get behind it. I just, I don't connect. There's no connection. So I, I, I completely agree with you. I know that there's a lot of fear. Um, yeah. There's always fear with anything new. I know there's people like worrying. I've got people in my DMs that are uh, very, artists in my DMs that are very fearful of how that their work is going to be knocked off, that they're, you know, all of this. But I completely agree with you. You know, there is something about when uh, when we show up as artists and we 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 put that energy and that the those emotions that that is what that energy is what connects us to our collectors. Yeah, it's always going to be 100%. that way. Always, always. It will AI can't always. do that. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but but I do think it's a fair question because there are so many people yeah. that are concerned about it. So I love that that is your perspective. Yeah. And I honestly, I, I don't even, it's not even in my realm of thoughts, <laughs> which may be pretty stupid, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? You're, are you going to feed your fear or are you yeah. going to feed your faith? What, which one are you going to yeah. feed? Because that's the one that's going to thrive. That's exactly right. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, do you happen to have a question for our next guest? Yeah. So... You probably picked up a little bit. I, I am a feeler. Like I said, every piece I feel like that I've created this, thus far tells a story for the collector. Um, there's a connection and a relation. So what piece or is there a piece that you've created that perfectly describes your soul or depicts your soul? Um, and if so, will you tell the story behind it? Ooh, I love this question. Uh, it's a little deep, but no, I love, I I love, love that part of knowing the story behind the piece or where it came from, from within, you know, so. I completely yeah. agree. And I've, I've talked about this um, on other podcasts about how it's so important for us as artists to be able to articulate what this piece, um, you know, something about the piece, some, in order to make a connection with a collector and you can't, it's tricky, right? Because yeah. You want the collector to have their own experience of the piece, you know, aside from, you know, what we have. So it's a little bit of a dance, but I feel like I'm more connected to art when I know the story, you know, behind 100%. it. A hundred percent. Same. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Okay. Miss Kristen Horner, how can people find you? So I, most of the time on Instagram at c.horner.studios. I'm on and Facebook we will put too. this in the show notes too. Yeah, we'll put yeah. the, your Instagram handle in the show notes. 
Perfect. And then uh, my email, you can always email Kristen at Seahorner Studios or check out my website, seahornerstudios.com. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Um, thank you so much um, for joining us today and for being so open and so honest about your journey and experience as an artist. Um, I know you're going to inspire so many people. Thank you so much for having me. Sorry to interrupt, but I want to share with you that beginning February 5th, I will be hosting for the very first time the Honest Art Boot Camp. This six week boot camp is designed for artists searching for their unique voice and style who want to finally make that ever so elusive fine art. Each week for six weeks, I will be guiding you live and painting alongside you as we learn the step-by-step -step tools that will take your art from fine to fine-ass fine art. That is a unique expression of you. Plus, and this is big, I'll offer weekly art critiques so that you can learn specifically how to make your art stronger. To learn more, go to jodyking.com or go to the link in the show notes, and I hope to see you there.